The Florida Gators are one of seven schools with a 2025 commit for now, at least. But how does that change recruiting overall for the Gators? We're going to find out here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Joining me now for Locked On Gators is John Garcia, Locked On's recruiting insider. And it's weird because we spent so much time talking about 2023 and then we shifted to 2024 a couple months ago. Um, And today we're talking about a 2025 that also might be a 2024 that also might be a 2023. (laughs) So it's a really uh, fun situation for Florida. But how unique is it just, just from this situation of having a 2025 commit late i mean it's april in 2023 and he could reclassify to join this summer so just how unique is that oh it's probably unprecedented you know austin simmons obviously is 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 well ahead academically uh they're they're at pahokee um a couple years ahead even this is something that we don't see quarterbacks are the the group that does reclassify most in my experience but it's a year if anything and it's usually just kind of a correction. It's like, hey, quarterback dads hold their kids back so they can be a little bit older, a little bit bigger when they do hit the, the requisite age. And then it's like, oh, well, things worked out. So let's just move ahead to where the, we should have been anyway. You know, you think of the JT Daniels is of the world um, most recently. Um, a couple of 2025 QBs are now in 24, Colin Hurley, the LSU commit, uh, Davi Belfort, uh, who just committed to Virginia Tech, uh, both in the state of Florida. Same deal, but we don't see two years. I mean, that's really – that is, is you know, Einstein-level academic uh, <laughs> advancement, really. But that's who Austin is. His GPA is over five. Uh, you talk to him, and, and you're like, how old are you? You know, I mean, he's that type of, of quarterback, person, recruit, pitcher, all, all of it. Uh, so you, you're not shocked to see that he has options academically. But two years is, is really – unprecedented especially i would say for a quarterback right the position that we all associate with maturity decision making all the things that naturally as human beings take more time to to hit uh now we're accelerating that by two full years if that does happen uh, i do think it will be a case study for all involved in and around the sport um but even if he goes up to 24 it's a heck of a jump you know this is a, a lot of, of sacrifice that it requires to even be under consideration there. You know, you know, Quinn Ewers has talked about skipping his senior year and how tough it was, you know, to not only miss out on the personal stuff, but to jump into a sophisticated, you know, college offense, you know, m- much less the academics and living away from home and all of that, just, to, hey, trying to pick up all this stuff when, when you thought you were going to run the same high school offense you've been running for, for three or four years. So all of that would be fascinating in the Austin Simmons case, but beyond all of it, this is a heck of a quarterback. He's a lefty. He's a big time pitcher. He's a dual threat. He's tall. Uh, he plays great competition. Uh, he's versatile. I mean, there's a lot to really like about the quarterback prospect itself, but when you start to get into the, the possibilities of him reclassifying, it becomes even more fascinating, uh, especially relative to what Florida's, I don't want to say been going through, but, you know, the circumstances around quarterback recruiting have been kind of all over the place. Uh, so to to have something like that thrown into it uh, would be a heck of a positive, but it would also be kind of interesting because now you reset and then you continue to recruit the class of 2025 for another quarterback. But that's a story probably for, for down the road. Either way, huge get uh, for Florida over Miami, really, and a bunch of others with, with Austin Simmons committing. Yeah, and it, it just sucks because, you know, Florida's never had a homeschooled lefty that can play baseball <laughs> that's ever found success. So that, that just that just really sucks because, yeah. you know, that, that's how it works. Um, but if you're Florida, what is the, I guess, even the purpose of wanting Austin Simmons to reclassify to 2023? Because we spent so much time talking about, you know, Marcus Stokes, Jaden Rashada, and all, all the 2023 possibilities didn't happen and at this point in the game very late obviously (laughs) the huge majority of the 2023 kids if not all are signed somewhere so what is even the purpose of bringing in a kid to say 
hey, you're basically going to redshirt during the fall, and then we're going to have the incredibly highly ranked 2024 DJ Lagway come in, Mm -hmm. and you're both going to be still freshmen at the time competing here. I I think it's just to combat the biggest issue most coaches would talk to you about in the sport. It's it's quarterback depth and the protection or the awareness of quarterback mobility, right? This other portal window is about to open in, in three and a half weeks. Uh, more quarterbacks are going to be out and about, especially in and out of SEC country. This is a protection and, and more comfort and depth in the QB room, which, which sounds so simple, but uh, it, it's not the NFL. You can't just go sign, you know, uh, Kurt Warner, who was bagging groceries uh, as I date myself here. Uh, you, you've got to recruit and bring kids in academically on scholarship. And there's there's obviously a lot of restrictions and, and a finite numbers beyond that uh so this is a protection move from the florida perspective and then you sell austin on hey you're a two-sport guy you're you're a brilliant quarterback this is going to give you more time to build up until like you said the spring of of 24 when dj gets there um and, and and this whole sort of program resets from a quarterbacking perspective thereafter uh and you you get a fresh slate with an advantage over dj who is already been billed as the future face of the Florida Gators. So then it becomes a fascinating, you know, one two deal there with, with those two in particular, but on the front and short end of this thing, it's if it all hits the fan in the next year or so on the field, there is another, you know, power five recruit at the position that can help you, whether it's, you know, on the game, on the field, which you hope it's not, um, but more so in practices in spring, you know, when you're trying to build depth and get through live looks with your whole roster, you, you need quarterbacks to do all of those things. So I think this this is really a protection and then it's really an operational value on the short end. And then for Simmons, it's it's a, an acceleration to where he could start bridging some of those gaps that we often hear as as struggles for for college quarterbacks. Yeah, us Florida Gators fans know all about the depth issues that Florida had last year. Uh, Billy Napier has publicly been like, yeah, we wanted to run Anthony Richardson more, but look who we had behind him. Yikes. Uh, So (laughs) great to address that. But baseball season is here, and I'm telling you, I have never had as much fun betting on home runs and strikeouts. We're back, baby. Time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Go have some fun. Uh, Thank you, Teoscar, for hitting a home run on Tuesday. I greatly appreciate that. It was a pretty rough day besides that. And uh, Agbaji with the Jazz for hitting four threes. Thank you. Love you. Very much appreciate you. But make sure to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back with fanduel.com slash locked on. That is fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Austin Simmons, DJ Lagway both publicly appear to be on board with each other. Like Austin Simmons has said, you know, we probably have the best quarterback room in the country if you have both of us in there. If Austin Simmons does reclassify to 2023 specifically, what impact would that have on? DJ Lagway and the rest of this 2024 class that is seemingly picking up momentum. Well, I think for DJ, it's, it's sort of an internal deal. You know, I I know he said all the right things, uh, but, but as a quarterback, you approach it that way. Um, Hey, you're going to compete no no matter who's there and no matter when, I guess they arrive. uh, You, you know, these are the guys that you have to compete with. And if the plan was for, you know, him to be the guy year one, which is something that he wouldn't say publicly and certainly Florida won't as well. It's just another uh, competitor to deal with, uh, which should theoretically make you better. Uh, but, you know, these these kids are humans and they're teenagers. So, you know, does this I think the, the bigger question is, does this make another school if and when this reclassification happens to say, hey, DJ, Another guy for you to worry about there at Florida. We don't have that issue here at school X, whatever it is, or wherever it is. Um, so, so I think that could potentially be something that pops up. But again, DJ himself, mature, calculated, understands uh, all of the parameters that come with, with being an early quarterback commitment. And this was something that I think he was going to have to deal with either way, because if it's not an Austin Simmons, it's somebody in the portal next month. 
or somebody in the portal at the end of the year. So so the odds of another quarterback appearing in this room before he gets there were always going to be pretty high because of what we've talked about, the lack of depth and the turnover at the position, as, as we haven't talked about. Hey, you're – you're losing a, a first rounder all of a sudden at the position uh, and you brought in a portal guy to potentially captain the ship thereafter, but a lot of inexperience and, and a whole you know lack of depth on top of that. So you were always going to keep an eye on the portal at a minimum from Florida's perspective. So I'm sure, especially with the people around him being a you know big time Texas quarterback who's coveted across the country, I'm sure it has come up. Hey, by the time you get to Gainesville, there's going to be another name or two maybe that, that you're not even thinking about right now. So these blue chip quarterbacks are, are built to compete. They know they've got to do it. If you want to be an underclassman star or a freshman star, if you want to be a, a Caleb Williams, a Drake May kind of guy, you're going to have to beat somebody older than you, maybe two or three guys older than you in that process. So that is something that I know DJ personally has already – sort of come to grips with and knows is, is an obstacle, you know, between him and, and starting there at UF. Yeah. If Austin Simmons does decide to stay in the 2025 class, which is also a possibility, he even said when he committed, he was like, yeah, for now, at least I'm still 2025. And when I get to Florida and then I'll be able to pursue my PhD, which is the most absurd thing I've ever heard that he's like, yeah, I'm a 2025 kid. That's about to be getting a PhD. But yeah, if yeah. Austin Simmons stays for 2025, how does that kind of change your approach for 2024 and 2025 recruiting where we spoke so often about DJ Lagway wanted to commit early so that Florida could have a year with him there. And then now with Austin Simmons, you could have two years with your blue chip quarterback committed. Oh, just massive. Just massive. We, we talked about sort of the issues, the ins and outs that Florida's dealt with recruiting quarterback so this will be the ultimate overcorrection right getting an in-state kid and that's obviously huge on board so so in advance uh would really stabilize a lot of it and i think all you had to do was really peruse social media after austin committed i i without looking for it i saw so many older recruits including jeremiah smith to bring him back up just excited just excited that austin had, had made his decision and it was florida um, you know, this state, uh, my home state is not known for producing a lot of big time quarterback recruits. So when one comes around and he stays in state, it's a really big deal um, because most of these big time F state of Florida quarterbacks, they've kind of tended to, to leave the state for their college football. So I do think all of those things matter heavily from from Florida's perspective, going against the grain with a lot of those trends. And look, when it's an in-state quarterback, when you're recruiting receivers, when you're recruiting running backs or, or, or anything else, there's a, a name recognition and a comfort there that just sits higher than it does for those out of state. Even in, in DJ Lagway's case, being a national recruit, it's a little bit different when this is a kid who grew up going to Florida and knows the ins and outs of that process. So I, I do think it, it just creates more cachet with Floridians. And look, it's UF recruiting. It's always going to start and probably end with prospects from the state of Florida. So the, the more big names in that state, it sounds so simple, the more big names in that state that you corral at, at positions of influence, and there's no greater than the quarterback spot, the more it's going to help you recruit down the road. It's just another layer of comfort and stability, which are the things that have plagued programs like Florida over the years because there has been so much transition not only coaching staff wise but personnel wise on top of that so this this helps more than than I'm even laying out at this point yeah uh Jeremiah Smith tweeted something like oh congrats my boy and then Austin Simmons was like hey you next so yeah, yeah. Austin <laughs> Simmons is already out there recruiting but how do you really approach 2025 right now if you're Billy Napier and, and Ryan O'Hara and the rest of this coaching staff where Right now, you know, Austin Simmons is going to eventually decide I'm going to reclassify or I'm not. Mm -hmm. And how do you kind of approach that 2025 recruiting where you're still trying to get 2024 kids on board? But are you also telling, you know, the top receiver in 2025, hey, we've got our blue chip QB already. We're one of seven schools that even have a 2025 commit and ours is a blue chip quarterback in the state. Yeah, you, you go slow, but you don't ignore those type of, of parameters. And I think that's it's kind of like with Austin Simmons. I mean, if you're going to take a 2025 this early, it better be one that you're very 
convinced is is going to make it. And I think that speaks to Austin's physical physical traits, but also this obvious maturity and understanding of 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 tasks that that he's got at his disposal. So yeah, I think you still go slow with it in general. But again, when you've got your QB one on board. It could always accelerate things. That's something we've we've talked a lot about. So, yeah, you still focus on 2024. And this staff, I would say, is very methodical in how it recruits, right? I know when Napier first took over, there was a lot of question marks about 23 because there was such a focus on finishing the 22 class so well. Um, that when they finally turned the page, it was a bit of a slow start, which which created a little bit of panic <laughs> with the fan base. But obviously it got corrected in, in a big way in 23. And, and we're seeing the same here in the class of 24. So this is a methodical staff. So that tells me that it's still going to be slow, even though you have a key item that could very much accelerate things. You don't want to push too much in that direction because there's just so much time between now. And even the spring of 25, when when is the earliest this group of of the normal group of recruits would end up there uh, in Gainesville. So you got to slow play it because you don't know what your needs are going to be. You don't know what your personnel looks like. Um, you know that that's the biggest issue in the sport itself. Uh, so doing it two years ahead is is just really hard to do. So you take it slow, um, but you you don't ignore the premium position guys, the in state guys who you know are going to be recruits that matter at the end of the day. So uh, most staffs are good at working those simultaneously. And obviously with this commitment, Florida is, is going to be lumped into that group. Yeah, With Simmons being a 2025 kid that can reclassify, how much weight would you say you should kind of put in this commitment where if he doesn't reclassify, it's two years out. And I mean, I'm not even confident the kids that are committed right now are still going to be committed where they are in, in eight months. So how do you kind of put weight in that? And is it different for Simmons just because you're like, hey, like so many people talk about his maturity. You've mentioned it multiple times today. Everybody talks about how mature Austin Simmons is. So is it different where you go, okay, like this is a mature kid. He obviously operates his whole life with a a ton of foresight. Like he graduated high school as a freshman. He finished high school classes. So is there a different weight here for a normal 2025 commit? Yeah, of course. Right. Uh, one, you just mentioned it, the academics. Um, when, when you have the possibility of moving up one class, much less two, that means you've communicated with Florida. That, that means you've communicated with Florida specific admission requirements. If it is going to be a Ph.D. as a freshman or whatever the absurdity is, you have dug into some of that you know, trajectory specifically with Florida and that curriculum. So I do think it hits a little bit different in that regard. And then on the surface level, look, quarterbacks, they move and they're probably moving a little bit more now in recruiting compared to yesteryear from a commitment decommitment perspective. But, you know, we we laid it out earlier in state, a kid who's extremely familiar with the process and the program itself been getting offers since middle school. So it's not like Florida was his first offer. He jumped on it and he was like, oh, my gosh, I'm just so excited. This is my dream school. All the the curses that that come with with some of those those phrases. This is a calculated decision. It just happened to be early in the eyes of most, but not in the eyes of Austin, who's, you know, in his third year of being a power five recruit, you know. So uh, I do think this this is a take it case by case perspective. So you put more weight on his verbal commitment than than most all others in the class of, of 2025 and probably ahead of some of those in the class of 24, as you laid out. Yeah. With Austin Simmons, DJ Lagway, Max Brown, Billy Napier uh, apparently has a type at quarterback by adding baseball players also, whether they're playing outfield or pitching, whatever it is. Uh, and baseball players that not just play baseball, but intend on continuing their baseball careers, being dual sport athletes at the college level. Is Do you think that's planned or just coincidence? And Because I know Billy Napier is very like, oh, we need people who are going to work hard and come in. And obviously, if you could be a dual sport athlete, you probably work pretty damn hard. And how much of that maybe is uh, like a, like a dual recruiting effort from Billy Napier and baseball coach, Kevin O'Sullivan from the say, Hey, like if it means I get them, I will help you recruit them <laughs> to the school. I'm sh- yeah. I'm sure that doesn't hurt. And those conversations have gone pretty smooth uh, across the board between those two coaches. But yeah, I, I think, 
he does have a type. You know, these these guys are dual threats, all of them, right? So I do think that comes with it. Um, and the dual sport stuff, you know, tells me that there's a, there's a mental ambition type here as well. You know, there, there's not a lot of quarterbacks on this roster or future roster that are kind of cookie cutter. Right. There's there, there's very much outside the box type of recruiting at the position. Um, so valuing that ambition probably correlates to some type of work ethic, as you mentioned, but also intellect uh, and, and the ability to take in a ton of information and continue to process it at a high level. If you if you watched Austin Simmons Friday night stuff, you probably wouldn't even consider him to be another player at another sport because he's so good at quarterbacking. So. To, to be able to have all of that uh, internalized, uh, I, I do think screams to, to Billy's desire to have ambitious prospects at the quarterback position where mobility, athleticism, creativity, decision making are have always been important, but they're more important now in, in the spread nature of the position. So I do think all of that uh, does correlate. And, yeah, there, there is a, a Billy Napier type at the quarterback position, but it, it falls in line with a lot of schools that, that have, have shifted their mentality uh, with, with their QB ones now. Don't get me wrong. They don't all want their QBs to be playing other <laughs> sports, especially if they're in that true mix or in line to be QB one uh, at Florida one day. But those are sort of bridges you cross when you have to, not something on the front end, especially in Simmons's case. I mean, look, a lefty throwing 93 as a 15 or 16 year old. That's not something that comes around every day. So that's a whole different argument and conversation that could potentially pop up there to where as, as a four-star quarterback, you might undersell that comparison in baseball to where he might even be more coveted in that sport one day. So uh, I think all of them are case by case, but you, you do understand the similarities relative to the modern asks of the quarterback position on the field. Yeah, thank you so much, John. This is John Garcia, Lockdown's Recruiting Insider. Catch him all throughout the Lockdown College channel and Lockdown Gators still every week. Still every week. We still got it.